hundreds of millions of red carbs have invaded, causing damage to thousands of hectares of agricultural products, causing many accidents to many people in pits. Australian farmers have introduced a series of measures to prevent hundreds of millions of red carps and have succeeded in controlling the species. Now let's get to watch this whole entire video until the end to get a little idea behind these control measures. The red carp is an invasive animal native to South America and introduced to Australia in the 1980s. This species of carp has flourished and adapted to the Australian environment, creating a series of problems for ecosystems and local communities. Red carbs reproduce by laying eggs, and this has contributed significantly to the rapid growth of crab populations in Australia. Adult females are capable of laying thousands of eggs each year and often deposit them in burrows or under rocks. The rapid growth of Australia's red crab population is rooted in several important factors. First of all, their ability to reproduce quickly allows them to reach adulthood in just one year and can start laying eggs after about two years. This contributes to a significant increase in red crab populations. Red crabs are also well adapted to their environment, being able to survive and adapt in many different types of environments including urban environments, which helps them survive and prevail in many different localities. Finally, the lack of natural predators in Australian red crab populations allows the population to grow without inhibition from predators. According to the Australian government estimates, the invasive red crab population has increased to about 200 million and they are widely distributed in various areas of Australia such as Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Western Australia and South Australia. This situation possesses a series of challenges in terms of managing and controlling the spread of the red crabs in the Australian environment and requires consideration of effective measures to respond to the invasion of the species and conserve it. Protect the local ecosystem. Going forward, research and implementation of red crab management measures, including strategies to control their populations and monitor their spread will be an important part of conservation and recovery efforts and the Australian environmental recovery. There is no need to create a plan that includes collaboration between government agencies, scientists and local communities to deal with red crab invasion and to ensure balance in the Australian ecosystem. Australian roads often become frequent sightings for red crabs, especially in the species habitat and on roads leading to beaches. Red crabs often migrate from their main habitat, from the jungle to the marine areas to reproduce. The migration period usually occurs during the rainy season, 
from October to November. One of the most famous roads in Australia, where red crabs often appear during migration, the Crab Run Road at Christmas Island. This road is about 10 kilometers long and is located between a jungle area and a beach. Every year, millions of red crabs migrate through this road to reach the beach. And the number of red crabs on these roads can reach millions, even tens of millions. Because red crabs often move slowly, forming a long line on the road, this can cause traffic congestion and pose a potential threat and danger to people and vehicles participating in traffic. To solve this problem, a number of measures have been taken such as closing some roads during the red crab migration, installing warning signs, and planting fences to prevent red crabs from entering the area. Traffic In addition, some people when migrating on this road will use brooms to move them. These measures are designed to ensure the safety of both the people and the red crabs during their migration, while helping to maintain balance in the species habitat in Australia. During migration, Red crabs often create a path from the forest area to the coast. Through the city area, this often leads to potential collisions between humans and wildlife. However, people in the area have taken their measures to protect this animal by building bridges. This bridge allows them to climb and cross the road more easily, while also creating safe conditions for pedestrians. This approach not only helps protecting red crabs, but also demonstrates the spirit of environmental conservation and harmony between humans and wildlife. And this is an example of how to combine wildlife protection and traffic safety in areas where human and the wildlife collisions are a problem. Thus, measures to prevent invasion have been used for the species of crabs. They were able to live in harmony with the environment and live peacefully with people. And lastly, we truly encourage everyone to treat non-harmful species at least equally. Thank you so much for watching this video until here. For now, let's continue watching the rest of the video. Why is the wild bear population growing so rapidly in the United States? They are present in 50 states. About 10 years ago, Americans went camping in the forest and encountered wild bears. Their numbers are very few and they are very scared when encountering humans. They feed them human food. Quite often, they have made them dependent on human food, making them more irritable and angry. They attack people's cars and steal their food. They move towards the city, 
looking for food from agricultural farms, attacking cattle farms, and rummaging through trash cans. The U.S. government had to come up with measures to prevent them. To prevent wild animals from accessing livestock farms, there are some simple and effective ways that we need to do. A first solution is that in outer farm areas, there should be a surplus feed regime for maximum production. Instead of providing too much food each day, calculate the amount of food needed for the full price to minimize waste and avoid creating an attraction for wild beers. Minimizing food scraps not only saves resources, but also reduces the number of wild beers in the area. Excess food not only creates opportunities for wild beers, but can also lead to changes in their behavior, as they rely on food sources more easily. By reducing food waste, we can create a safer environment for livestock and prevent wild beers from accessing farms, ensuring that both parties can share the same habitat without causing termites to each other. In addition, using measures to protect animal feed is also an important solution. Solid barns and electric fences can be used to ensure that livestock feed is protected from access by wild beers. This not only protects the feed, but also ensures the safety of your livestock. Fences here will be built around cattle farms and trees. The energy panel system will energize the fence ensuring that there is always electricity for the fence. However, there are some fences that they can still get through. They will try to steal the food, as they are very disappointed. Increased security is another important part of preventing wild beers from entering farm residential areas. Install security cameras to monitor wild beer activity, which can provide valuable information about their presence. So what would you do if you knew a wild beer was nearby? Can you take appropriate security measures? Run as fast as you can and tell people around you about their presence to ensure your safety and everyone else. Please quickly notify the security agency so that they can promptly assist you in handling these situations. Educating people in the farm area about how to avoid wild beers is another important part of this strategy. Awareness of how to respond to wild beers and how to practice safety measures can help create a safer environment for both humans and wild beers in the same area. Just take a quick look at how they handle it to know what you should do if you encounter such a situation. Think about how to handle it yourself and learn skills to protect yourself. In addition to these measures, hunting is also one of the most widely used measures in the U.S. states.
it has become an important part of countermeasures against wild bear attacks. This is a task that not only requires professionalism, but also ensures the safety of people in wildlife. In dealing with wild bears, hunters have an important role in finding and capturing them. They are often people with depth knowledge of bear behavior and ecology, along with advanced hunting skills. Hunters are trained to identify wild bear tracks, monitor their expressions, and predict the bear's potential actions to ensure their safety and the safety of the natural environment. They can place cameras in areas where wild bears often appear to monitor their behavior as well. as well as placing crates of their favorite food so they appear faster. Once the presence of wild bears has been identified in an area, the U.S. hunters often apply careful security measures. Wild bear hunting is a process that requires precision and patience. Hunters use hunting tools and aid safety approach to capture the bears. They will travel in a group so they can properly support each other during the hunting process. The ultimate goal of hunting wild bears isn't to completely eliminate the species but to ensure that the wild bears and humans can share the same habitat without posing a threat to each other. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.